Okay, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, again, I've been working on the Getsy project, uh, which aims to uh, bring uh, different tools, geodetic tools into uh, use for societal issues. So societally relevant uh, uh, issues, water resources, climate change, volcanic hazards, earthquakes. So I think the biggest takeaway that uh, you should maybe take uh, from this is that geodesy as a science has advanced a lot and we are geodesists are sitting on a huge amount of data which have not been transferred into classes which is a uh, i think the best way to you know transfer that data uh, and the other thing is those data could be used uh, easily with a little bit of work uh, applied into variety of scales and one of the biggest things is when i teach class uh, uh, introductory classes in geology is a scale issue, especially time. We are not exposed to time in millions of years. Other than saying Africa and South America were together 100 million years ago, you could say a year ago they were an inch closer. And here is the data that I have will give a nice perspective and contextualize, uh, you know, the, the science and localize uh, that type of science for the students. And I'm really lucky and very proud to be part of our at least slightly contribute in that system being part of the uh, Getsy project. Uh, so a little bit about me. So I'm a PhD student, so I, I'm from Ethiopia. I did my base and master's in geology at Tava University. I'm a PhD at the Oklahoma State University. I study a sedimentary basin in Eastern Africa that's completely exhumed or uh, exposed due to its location near the East Africa Rift system, which is a classical example of continental rifting. So the rift just went through the basin and opened it into like 3D. So I use multiple geodetic remote sensing and field data and study the basin. So if you are interested, I'll talk about it. So and those are the different universities that I've had a, a ch chance to interact with some a lot, with others a little bit. Uh, and the modules are measuring us with GPS, landscape environmental change, uh, climate change measures, and field GPS. So those are the four modules I've been working on. Uh, so many of the data I've been using GPS collected from the PBO site, Plate uh, Observatory, uh, Plate Boundary Observatory, and the NGO, uh, especially if you are in some places such as in Greenland, uh, uh, the, the PBO has a limited data, so I use the NGO. So those are the two data sites, the GPS data. So the first module measuring us with GPS. So just to give you an example, there is a station uh, in, in, in Oregon, for instance, where you can see the station is moving north and east uh, with a certain distance or velocity. So you can measure the amount of stress that's accumulating in effectively about six, seven, eight years. So I could use this information to teach about earthquakes. Uh, and this is just showing GPS, especially the GPS that we use has the capacity to collect uh, position data from more than 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 satellites. So you have very accurate, uh, you know, uh, position data. And this is a station from, uh, I think, uh, in Colorado. So some of the data that I've been producing and delivering for the professors includes uh, GPS uh, sites from, for instance, this is the measuring as GPS specifically materials for earthquake stitching from California, as you can see. So this location, this station is located over the San Andreas Fault. San Andreas Fault. Overall, you can see the movement of the plates, the velocity, but you can also see sudden movements in the, velo in the, in the velocity curve, uh, in the graph. So you can show those types of you know, offsets to teach that you know, these are kind of uh, offsets that ha happen suddenly, which are earthquakes. But overall, plate movement also can be shown. The other is using again, GPS for uh, measuring, uh, uh, monitoring glacial, glaciated areas. On top, both left and right, we have a station from Greenland and also from Alaska, where you can see, you can see seasonal changes up and down, but overall, the GPS station is growing or the, is uplifting or moving up. So that means we are losing glacier, I mean, we're losing water or, uh, or glacier water overall, uh, and the land is asostatically uplifted. Uh, and we can tie, when you come to California, overall the GPS station is subsiding because of the groundwater removal. 
So we can really teach in a time scale that is relatable to students uh, in, in, a, in an area which is relevant to the society. So I, I was you know, helping produce this map for, uh, for the professor. The other uh, module I've been working with, landscape change. Uh, so I'm mostly helping the, the, the professors on ArcGIS needs. So I learned also QGIS Cloud Compare, but I haven't got any data, they haven't responded. So if you have data or if you need to learn QGIS, to use a little of money, I'm happy to teach you. So, uh, so uh, one project I w was involved with in this uh, summer is uh, producing a landscape, la landslide kind of inventory data for Arizona. So I was given a polygon, loss of point, point data. So I had to migrate those point data within, within a polygon of high elevation. Uh, and the other one is I was checking, rectifying copyright issues or figures and updating references on the website. And like that. Uh, the other is climate change uh, module. So I worked, uh, developed a lecture on time series, using time series uh, inside data for climate uh, ice velocity uh, modeling. So you can see here, this is from uh, like a stack of probably thousands of uh, inside interferometric image. Uh, from uh, uh, Antarctica, where, so kind of giving a background information how we get to develop these types of data. And the other is again developing lecture for gray satellite uh, or gray data. And preparing figures, copyright issues, things like that. So I also have uh, got to work on septentrio systems, took the instrument out and tested it. I'm involved in the uh, GPS workshop in Idaho, will be running. August 14 to 17, uh, and I was, I was again pros processing raw data from Nepal, three years of campaign data uh, for in case the field GPS we do, we are going to be doing in Idaho somehow fails the, our data, so we have a backup data from Nepal that we could use in class, so I was processing, I already processed all the data. Uh, I'm testing a certain pin, uh, pinpoint, which is a, a kind of mobile app to use uh, in case that the collector, you know, just, uh, it's a new system, so I'm trying, I'm testing that system also. The other is, I was in the ER, Earth Educators were in the room. This is a 3D uh, drone image of the participants. And I'm also doing thermochronology lab at CU Boulder, at the five, which is really uh, a very good opportunity. Uh, and thank you for my mentors for, for giving me that latitude to do other stuff. And I also got uh, working on the, the Trimble system here. So I will be running a, a campaign, field campaign survey in Oklahoma. So I learned the system here. And I will be teaching also a course in Oklahoma, about 150 students. I'm really excited to use these materials in my own class. Uh, so yeah, like one of the areas I'm trying to deploy the GPS is this GPS site in Oklahoma that kind of shows a funny GPS, you know, signal. So, so thank you, my mentors, everyone at UNAFCO. And if you have questions, I'm happy to answer.